Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of the railroad. I was asked by one of the YouTube followers to show some operations of the freight yard. So we're going to see if we can do a little bit of a demo. Uh, the camera's being held in my hand, so forgive a little bit of the shakiness, but in order for me to throw the switches, run the trains, move things around, it's got to be this way. So we're going to use this engine right now just to, for the demo purposes. And we're going to bring it out onto the, bring it out to one of the tracks here. Uh, just pull it out a little bit. And basically for the purposes of the demo, we're going to pull a string of these uh, 57 foot reefers. So a little background on the yard because there were pictures that I posted uh, in front of this video. I have two ladders. One's a west side ladder and one's the east side ladder. Uh, you can access it from both sides of the railroad, meaning all the way down on the end. And if you see that tower in the back there, we'll do a zoom in. That's CP South. And then we'll come all the way back here. And this is CP Rock. This is your entrance to the ladders. So we have a number of ladder tracks here. We've got tracks 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Track 1 is dedicated for cabooses. Track 3 right now has reefers. Track 5 has uh, lumber uh, cars, center beams, and some thralls in the back. Uh, track 7 has miscellaneous freight cars. Tr same thing with track 9. And track 11, all the way in the back there, has got 60-foot uh, auto box cars. Uh, behind those tracks, there's four more tracks. And those are my arrival and departure tracks. Uh, so if a train needs to be built up, a yard master can put some trains and some freight cars back there and build the train. Uh, there are four tracks. The last track on the end actually goes to some industries. So if the yard master is bored, he can go switch out American hardware uh, on the end there. Uh, the other car, the other buildings here are pretty much just backdrops. And then down the road, I'm going to extend this track a little bit further and add uh, some more flats. We'll probably take that engine out of there uh, and add the other industry. Uh, so there'll be more switching in the yard. Uh, when the yard master gets bored, he can switch out Martin Salt as well. The right side of the ladder, or as I say, the east side of the ladder, uh, has got track 2, 4, 6, 8, and 12. And track 2 is dedicated for engines. Uh, track 4 has got some ballast cars and can be used for uh, uh, gondola cars with pipes. Same thing with track 6. Track 8 has coil. Uh, and then track uh, 10 and 12 has tank cars. Track 14, uh, that leads to Martin Salt. And if it's not being used, it's usually set to go uh, out to uh, CP South or to leave the yard. So let's get back to that uh, switcher. Well, actually, it's a GP38-2. We're going to just bring it up here a little bit, bring it up the uh, west ladder, and we'll just pull out the uh, four reefers on track three. So, make it easy for the yard master or anybody else that's running the railroad uh, because these are the switches I'm using, Atlas switches. Uh, I used some uh, not rule numbering system. Uh, I guess they were from Atlas, whatever, I can't remember. And usually milepost markers, so why not? This way it's easy to identify uh, the switches. So, how do we throw the switches in the yard? Very easy. This is the main panel for Rock Ridge Freight Yard. And as you can see, there's a number of uh, switches on the panel there. Uh, the one thing is that if the yard master 
is working the yard and only the yard without referring to the arrival departure tracks, he can pretty much control everything from here. You've got switches that will send you up the west ladder or the east ladder. And also when you want to exit uh, Rock Ridge, you know, depending on which track you're on. This switch here will send everything to the other uh, four tracks, which are the arrival departure tracks. And we have another panel uh, to the left of me here. And for this set of switches, depending on where uh, the Yardmaster is, if he's moving around, we've got the panel here for the arri North Arrival Departure Rock Ridge. And I will just quickly move over to the other panel. And here's the South Arrival Departure for Rock Ridge, showing the service tracks and showing to each ladder. Uh, when there's an operating session, we have signals that are in place. Yardmaster will control it. This is for the signal to the right here. CP Cargill is on the other side. And of course, this just throws uh, stop signals to uh, both sides. And that's usually if there's someone that's waiting for uh, a train to be built. So let's go back and get those freight cars and move them out of the yard. So right now, those four reefers are on track three. We'll just throw track three, go back up, reverse the engine. And just for time sake, we'll just pull these four cars. Normalize the switch on track three. Now, even though I'll run at times modern, I always like to have a caboose on the train where possible. So we're going to grab this caboose here. Uh, it is Caboose number 58, if I'm not mistaken, it is uh, an any 5 caboose that I had uh, a friend paint for me. I have two painters, one that does engines and cabooses out of Massachusetts, and then I have uh, my friend down in Georgia who's done 99% of my freight cars. Uh, his private railroad uh, is the Empire Belt. My private railroad is Atlantic Pacific. Not to be confused with Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, which went bankrupt and out of business, unlike the Atlantic Pacific Railroad, which is quite profitable in train terms. So now we have the caboose. And looks like he picked up a couple of more cabooses. So we're just going to cut them off with our handy pick. There we go. We'll cut it again. There we go. And we'll be on our way. Let's all remember this is a model railroad, not like the real railroads. And the train is heading out. Off to deliver the freight of the day. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.